Hello and welcome to ET Info. My name is David Barnes. I'm part of the IBM Emerging Technologies team. This video is the fourth in a series around a new technology from our team called Project Blue Spruce. In the previous videos, I was joined by Dan Gisolfi. Dan showed me around Blue Spruce. He showed me its capabilities. We talked about why Blue Spruce, what are the business reasons behind it. And then he showed me demonstrations of different business scenarios we've built with our customers. In this video, Dan is joining me once again to show one of my favorite applications of Project Blue Spruce, telemedicine. So I'm back here with Dan Gisolfi, Dan, the Chief Technology Evangelist around Project Blue Spruce. Dan, thanks for joining me one more time. Hi, David. And in the previous videos, you know, you showed me around Blue Spruce. We talked about, you know, what it can do, why you're creating it. We saw those great examples around real estate and finance. But I think you and I both agree this example of Project Blue Spruce is worthy of its own video, and it's around telemedicine. Um, show me what it is we're looking at here. Okay, David. So, again, this is a purpose-built application, but as you point out, focused on the area of healthcare or telemedicine. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest in how to use technology to improve um, some of the challenges in the area in healthcare. Um, take, for example, some of the shortages of physicians or radiologists or essentially medical professionals around the world, and the um, uh, amount of need need for healthcare uh, by patients. So, for example, here, imagine the. Uh, relationship between a radiologist and a physician, a radiologist and another radiologist wanting to converse around uh, content uh, like DICOM images. What you're seeing here, as I drag my uh, viewport wow. over an image, uh, wow. you, this is doing some colorization over a uh, JPEG, which is a exported instance of a DICOM image coming from a PAC system. So a little background here, radiologists use um, PAC systems to look at uh, images from e medical imaging equipment. But those systems can export the, the data or the content into uh, JPEG format uh, that can be used on the web. And this way, people can not have to be tied to those PAC systems to converse and uh, do annotation and uh, discuss patient, very important patient data. You know, I don't know all of the acronyms, but I don't think I need to to get the point behind what this can actually do. In fact, I can take this and move it around as well, right? There's the So now you see we've added the cooperative web aspect. You and I are both simultaneously interacting with the content. Wow, okay? this is this is mind-blowingly cool. And you and I, I mean, you could be in Kenya and I could be in Zurich and you could be a physician and we can have more than just us, right? Absolutely. And and so Think about what goes on here. I, I'd like to show you another feature that is very popular in, well, and, and necessary in PAC systems that we are being able to take from, uh, from PAC systems and inject it into this web example. Um, so I'm going to go and do some annotation here to our image. And this would be something a radiologist may do, right? Measure the size of the lungs, for example. Now, David, I want to point out, because we are cooperative web enabled here, you can also click on your pen okay. and do some annotation onto the image. Okay, I'm going to, it looks like I've got some red ink here. Oh, I've got a drop down palette of choice. So at this point, I could draw right here and point out the fact that I think that is a problem. And I might say that this is a problem and you'd be able to see it from the other end. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. And so. You know, this becomes very powerful. And again, we're just showing an example here of how it can be used, but we've had discussions with several uh, industry, um, uh, medical industry uh, uh, folks, and this becomes something that can be used to improve productivity, not replace what is already used in the hospitals, but to improve productivity and to, pr and to pr improve conversation around important content. And as you point out, sometimes the radiologist or the physician is going to be very far away from the potential patient um, or maybe in other experts. So how do we br leverage the web, leverage the ubiquitous browser to bring those people together in a collaborative manner? Now, I'd like to also point out, David, for the audience, is that when we do, you do actions like this and you do annotations, it's important in the medical industry to also have the ability to save that off 
and make sure everything that's been dis discussed is added to the, elec the open um, electronic medical record. Um, so with Project Blue Spruce, we've taken that into, note, into uh, uh, consideration, and you have a camera here up on the top where I can click on that and take a snapshot. And then in future um, iterations of our uh, technology, we're also going to have the ability to record the entire session. So you can save that off as well. This is fantastic. So for anyone that didn't watch the previous videos, I need to point out we don't have special equipment here. I got a Handycare webcam that I bought at Fry's. Dan's got the same. And we're running in a browser with a plug-in. So, and it doesn't even matter the platform. Is that right, Dan? I mean, you could be no. on a net, you could be on literally a $300 netbook and be doing the same thing. That's right. All you need is the broadband access, the low uh, commodity hardware, and access to a browser. In and this case, we're using Safari or IE. It doesn't matter. And I wouldn't even call a broadband access requirement because I have very low up link bandwidth at my home and this works just fine for that. That's a very good point, David. In fact, um, you know, we've heard from several uh, doctors, given this different situation, imagine uh, a dermatologist w uh, working with um, uh, a military field station that's very remote um, or maybe on a ship. The video here where you and I are actually seeing each other, in that case may not necessarily be important. What would be important is the video of the rash uh, in that example. So depending on the scenario, um, and the broadband connectivity, uh, the p point is make sure the technology is used for enhancing the productivity, not just for the glamour of the video. Absolutely. And, and with that, having said that, I know that the audience right now is looking at us in a thumbnail, but this little webcam that I have does true 1920 1080, which is high def. And if the bandwidth is there, we could handle that. So this could be a patient that doctors are sharing real-time information about. That's right. Wow, this, it, uh, this is a fantastic example. Dan, let's get together and make some more videos as you work on some more things because it's pretty easy for me to do a capture here in you know, Project Blue Spruce. As we talked about, uh, this has got so much potential for me to actually create videos and interview smart people. Not that I'm not smart. I can run a camera, but that's about it. So how about if we hook up again in the future and we look at uh, some more examples of Project Blue Spruce? Looking forward to it, David. Cool. Thanks very much, Dan. I think you can see why that's one of my favorite examples of the power of Project Blue Spruce. And we did that all in a browser. If you've missed any of my previous videos, you can check them out. I post them all at youtube.com slash ibmetinfo. And if you're interested in engaging with us around a proof of concept around Blue Spruce, you can contact our JSTART team. That's our Jumpstart team. And they're JSTART at us.ibm.com.